you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, kids. We usually uh, talk to mostly teachers at seminars, uh, telling them how to sing lyrics to their kids to teach them things. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of how this all started. Uh, this was back in the uh, 1970, 1971. I worked at an advertising agency uh, for a wonderful man called David McCall, who was full of ideas. He came back from a camping trip with his kids and had noticed that uh, his uh, youngest boy, who was having trouble with multiplication tables in school, um, could sing every rock lyric. So uh, in my race to the top, I used to get in early every morning so I could have coffee with the boss. And the boss came in and said, gee, I had this idea. Uh, who do you know who could write songs like that? Well, uh, I knew Bob Duro. And uh, so we called Bob and said, come on up. The boss wants to talk to you about an idea he has. And Bob came in, and David said, I want to put the multiplication tables to, tape, uh, to music but I don't want you to write down to the kids. I want you to write intelligent songs, not just two times two is four, you know, three times three is nine. Uh, so anyhow, Bob went away, and uh, three weeks later, he came back to our office and uh, set up his wall and sack tape recorder and sang for us three is a magic number. And the, yeah. And the minute we heard that the line, a man and a woman had a little baby, there's three in a magic number, we looked at one another and said, well, we got it. Our biggest uh, account at the time was ABC Television. Uh, the children's guy there was a man that we used to call Mike Eisner. He later became Michael Eisner. And uh, at any rate, uh, we took our, uh, at the behest of uh, one of the fellows who worked on that account, Rad Stone, we took a storyboard over to Eisner. And Eisner was doing a show with Chuck Jones, who you might know is a, just a, an animation legend uh, who did the Road Runner and Bugs Bunny. And so Tom showed them the storyboard and they listened to the music and Eisner turned to Chuck Jones and said, what do you think? And Jones said, buy it as long as he draws it, referring to my partner, Tom. And that's how we got on television, one meeting. People spend 20 years taking ideas to networks and never get close. So we came back and we started writing the songs and uh, Bob didn't write them all. Uh, some of the ones you're here tonight were done by Lynn Ahrens, who's been a very popular uh, composer for Broadway. Uh, some by Dave Frischberg, who is a wonderful jazz pianist and lyricist who wrote I'm Just a Bill, one of our favorites. And uh, we, it just, you know, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And the interesting thing is that in those days, there were no computers. There was no MTV. And our only outlet was on the ABC television network. And what's astonishing to me is that these songs that these great people wrote back then, before there were even computers, uh, now there have been 30 million hits on YouTube of people wanting to see and hear Schoolhouse Rock song. So uh, that should uh, tell you something about Bob's talent and Tom's talent as uh, not only an, an, uh, an art director and the designer of the animation, uh, but also as a lyricist. He did uh, the uh, uh, I Was Suffering Until Suffrage, about the women's suffrage, uh, movement, and then in the 90s, he wrote a song which is particularly uh, 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 appropriate today called Tyrannosaurus Debt. And it was about the national debt in the form of a huge dinosaur who eats money as fast as the government can shovel it in. So uh, having said that, uh, now I, it's my incredible pleasure to introduce to you uh, uh, Bob, without his wall and sack tape recorder, uh, this is Mr. Bob Duro. Thank you, George. Thank you, Diana. This is awesome. We're so glad you came out tonight. And is it okay if I sing the first song that got it all started?
A. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. It's a magic number. Somewhere in the ancient mystic trinity, you get three as a magic number. The past and the present and the future, faith and hope. Charity, the heart, the brain, and the body give you three. There's a magic number. Well, it takes three legs to make a tripod or to make a table stand. It takes three wheels to make a vehicle called a tricycle. Every triangle has three corners. Every triangle has three sides, no more, no less. You don't have to guess. When it's three, you can see it's a magic number. Well, a man and a woman had a little baby, baby, baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. And that's a magic number. Okay, kids. So much for magic. It's time to take care of business. I know you counted by two, you counted by fives, you counted by tens. But today we're gonna count by threes. It's real easy when you get started. And I want you to count it with me, okay? We'll take it all the way up to 30, where it comes out even. Are you ready? Here we go, on your mark, get set, count by three. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. Do it again. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. Now, the multiples of three come up three times in each set of ten. In the first ten, you get three, six, nine, and in the teens, you get 12, 15, and 18, and in the 20s, 21, 24, 27, and it comes out even on 30. But now we're going to multiply back from 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 5 is 3 times 4 is Three times three is nine. Three times two is six. And three times one. What is it? Yeah. That's a magic number. That's a magic number. Well, that was pretty good. But I was having a little trouble with the mic. But I don't think you were helping out a lot. We're going to do that multiplication table one more time. Starting at three times ten and working down to three times one. But this time, I'm going to cut out on the answer and leave you holding the bag. I'll be listening. Are you ready? Here we go now. We multiply back and from a three times a ten. Three times ten is three times nine is a three times eight is a three times seven is a three times six is a three times five is a three times four is and three times three is and three times two is six and three times one what is it yeah that's a magic number that's a magic number that's better Let's all sing the last little couplet about the man and the woman. Well, a man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. And that's a magic.
number. <laughs> Thank you. Well, when he came to writing a song about eight, no problem, because when you skate, you can make a figure eight. So that's how it got started. So we're going to do figure eight now. But in the middle, we're going to multiply by eight. It's a chance to get off on your new metric called 12 times 8. It's the same as 10 times 8 plus a 2 times 8. Ha ha! 80 plus 16, 96. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 8 is 32. And 5 times 8 is 4. Figure eight, that's double four. Figure four, that's half of eight. If you skate, you will be great. When you can make a figure eight. That's a circle that turns round upon itself. Place it on its side. And it's a symbol meaning infinity. Okay, now turn your turn your program to conjunction junction. And we're all gonna sing it together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, how's that function? I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. Conjunction, junction, what's their function? I got N button R, they'll get us pretty far. Dig this, N, that's an additive like this and that and then there's but 
and you say, not this, but that. And then there's R when you have a choice. This or that. And but now, they'll get us pretty far. Now sing it. Conjunction, junction, so fun. Hooking up two box cars and making them run right like these. Bread and butter, milk and honey, peas and rice. Dirty but happy, digging and scratching, losing his shoe in the button or two. He was poor but honest, sad but true. Boo, boo, hoo, boo, hoo. Now sing the song. Conjunction, junction, watch your fun. Hooking two words to one, if you should have a choice, you might say. Either now or later, or no choice. Neither now nor ever. Thank you. Eat this or that, grow thin or fat. I'm already too fat. Ah, conjunction, junction. Watch your bunks. Hooking up phrases and clauses that need to balance like these. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. You cut loose the sandbag, but the balloon wouldn't go any higher. Let's go up to the mountains or down to the seas you should always say thank you or at least say please conjunction junction watch your function telling a big long story like the one i'm about to lay on you now in the mornings when i'm usually wide awake i love to take a walk through the gardens and down by the lake where I often see a duck and a drake, and I wonder as I was what the, they would say if they could talk. Quack, 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 quack. Sing it, baby. Got you. Look it up those little words and making them function. Conjunction, junction. I'm gonna get you there if you're very, very careful. Sing it. I'm gonna get you there if you're very, very careful. Sing it. Now you all know about the preamble huh turn your program to the preamble because someday you kids will grow up you'll be in a classroom where the teacher will say I want every student to recite the preamble you'll be ready hey do you know about the USA do you know about about the USA. In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers did agree to write a list of principles for keeping people free. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. So our people spell it out, the things that we should be. And they put down those principles on paper. And it's been running our country ever since. It tells what the founding fathers, the first part is called the preamble. It goes like this. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of a liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish constitution for the United States of America. In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers all sat down and wrote
wrote a list of principles that's known the world around. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. So our people spell it out. All the one in the land of liberty. And the preamble goes like this. Sing it. justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of I'm going to do you one more song and then we have a very exciting group. You can see their setup here. Rock Nostrums will be up after this song. And uh, I didn't, I need to mention that George Newell also wrote some of the songs, and I think Rock Nosseris is doing two of George's songs, so hang on tight. Now this song is called, I'm Just a Bill. It was dedicated to Washington, D.C. I'll have to do the little boy tourist part too. Sure have to climb a lot of steps to get to this old Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Well, I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the Capital City is a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee, but I know I'll be a law someday. At least I hope and pray that I will, but today I am still just a bill. Gee, Bill, you sure have a lot of courage. Yeah, well, I got this far. When I started out, it wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. And some folks back home decided they wanted their law passed. So they called their local congressman. And he said, you're right. There ought to be a law. And he wrote me out and introduced me to Congress. And I became a bill. And I'll be a bill until I become law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. But now I'm stuck in committee. I'll sit here and wait. The key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be a law. I hope and pray that they will. But today I am still just a bill. Listen to all that arguing and discussing and debating. Is that about you, Bill? Yes, I'm one of the lucky ones. I sure hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise, I may die. Dying committee. Oh, but it looks like I'm going to live. Now I go down to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. If they vote yes, then what happens? Then I have to go to the other house and the whole thing starts all over. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill, well, then I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in line with a lot of other bills for the president to sign and if he signs me then I'll be a law I hope and pray that he will but today I am still just a bill Bill, you mean to say even if the whole Congress says you should be a law the president can still say no? Yep, that's called a if the president vetoes me then I have to start all over it's not easy to be a law, is it, Bill? No. But how I hope and pray that I will, but today I am. They signed you, Bill. You're a law. Ah! 
Here's Rock Nasserus. Wow. Bob Duro. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. He'll be back for one more. <laughs> so, Willie Bob, we're following Bob Duro. Yes. That's a tough one. Pressure is on. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. a lot of showbiz experience right there. We are Rock Nossers. That's Coach Cotton. That's Willie Bob. I'm Boogie Woogie Benny. We are delighted to be here just to... Uh, share some schoolhouse rock favorites with you. We're going to start off our portion of the show and dedicate it to anybody who might be learning about adjectives right now. Yes. Always. <laughs> Got home from camping last spring. Saw people, places, and things We barely had a ride Friends asked us to describe The people, places, and every last thing So we unpacked our adjectives I unpacked frustrating first Reached in and found the word worst Then I picked soggy and Next I picked foggy and then I was ready to tell them my tale Cause I'd unpacked my adjectives Adjectives are words you use to really describe things Handy words to carry around The days are sunny or they're rainy Boys are dumb or else they're brainy Adjectives can show you which way are often used to help us compare things To say how thin, how fat, how short, how tall Girls who are tall get taller And boys who are small get smaller The one is the tallest, the other is the smallest of all We hiked along without care Then we ran into a bear He was a hairy bear He was a scary bear retreat from his lair and described him with adjectives you can even make adjectives out of the other parts of speech like verbs or nouns all you've got to do is tack on an ending like ick, ish, or airy for example this boy can grow up to be a huge man but still have a boyish face Boy is a noun, but the ending ish makes it an adjective. Boyish. That describes the huge man's face. Get it? Next time you go on a trip, remember this little tip. The minute you get back, they'll ask you this and that. You can describe people, places, and things. Simply unpack your adjectives You can do it with adjectives Tell them about it with adjectives You can shout it with adjectives That is a song about adjectives. I feel more grammatically correct already. Wow, you look smarter, Willie Bob. Right. You look smartish. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the spirit of Schoolhouse Rock, we are going to ask an old schoolmate of ours to join us on stage and sing yes. another of Bob Darrow's songs. This is Joshua. Oh. We're going to do a little number here about electricity. Yes. Dangerous stuff, but very useful. But be careful. Yes, be very careful. <laughs> Requires lots of explanation, too. Yes, it does. <laughs> When you're in the dark, you want to see, you need a electricity, electricity. Flip that switch and what you get, you get a electricity, electricity. Where do you think it all comes from? It's powerful. Electricity, electricity. Through how wise you hear. Bring it on. Electricity, electricity. Every building my 
must be wired to use it. Electricity, electricity, burning fuel and making steam to generate. Electricity, electricity, turn the generator by any means you're making up. Electricity, electricity. A generator is a powerful machine that contains a magnet that creates a magnetic field. Now, when wires are rotated rapidly within that field, you get a current of electricity. If we only had a superhero to stand here and turn that generator, we wouldn't have to use so much fuel to make electricity. Benjamin Franklin flying his kite was searching for electricity, electricity. He knew it had something to do with lightning. It's all a electricity, electricity. Rubbing a comb with wool or fur will give you a charge. Electricity, static electricity. Stroking a cat to make it purr. You're building up static electricity, electricity. Now electricity at rest is called static electricity. Like when you're wearing a winter coat and you touch a doorknob and you get a shock. Or when you sneak up on your friend and zap him on the ear after shuffling across the carpet. That's called electricity. Current flowing to and fro makes a circuit of electricity, electricity. Voltage is the pressure that makes it go. It's pushing up electricity. Electricity. Watch, we'll tell you how much you'll be using it. So. Electricity, electricity. Powerful stuff, so watch that plug. It's potent. Electricity, electricity. Yeah. Electricity, electricity, electricity. Electricity, electricity. electricity. Joshua. All right. Thank you very much for coming out and keeping us company here tonight. Yeah. It is really exciting to see this many people here, and it is really exciting to be performing these songs, which left a, an indelible mark on me in my childhood. I remember the animation and the singing and the voices, and oh, yes. it was really quite an honor. So thank you to everybody here. Yeah, yeah, when we were learning this stuff, I was amazed at how... I remembered every single one of these videos that uh, we were <laughs> using as our uh, our rehearsal oh tool. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> we were we were among those thirty million hits for sure. <laughs> we're gonna do a song now that seems appropriate for the Washington D.C. area. It's all about the birth of our great nation, and it's called Fireworks. Ago. 1776. Fireworks! There were fireworks too. Red, white, and blue! The original colonists, you know their temper's blue. Really blue! Like Thomas Paine once wrote, it's only common sense. Only sense. If your government will give you your basic rights, you, you gotta, gotta get another government. government. And though some people tried to fight it, when the committee was formed to write it Benjamin Franklin, Phil Bluthingston John Adams, Roger Sherman, Thomas Jefferson They got it done The Declaration The Declaration of Independence 1776 The Continental Congress said that we are free You got the right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness soon when England heard the news. Cacao. They blew their stack. But the colonists lit the fuse. There'd be no turning back. We had enough of injustice now. And even if it really hurts, you give us a basic rights. You're gonna see some fireworks. And on the 4th of July, they signed it. And 56 names underlined it. And now to honor those first 13 states, we turn the sky into a birthday cake. I got it done. 
Declaration. Declaration of Independence. 1776. The Continental Congress said that we are free. We got the right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are given by their creator certain inalienable rights, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if there's one thing that makes me happy, you know that it's, ooh, there's gonna be fireworks. <laughs> That's Willie Bob on the fireworks noise. That is authentic. That's very good, Willie Bob. He's been practicing. All right, we're going to bring up Joshua one more time here and do another song. This next song is actually the reason we asked Joshua to do this gig with us, because <laughs> it's, George, not, it's not easy to sing, that's why. <laughs> George, and, uh, George and Bob certainly are the... the the cornerstone of Schoolhouse Rock, but Jack Sheldon did the voice for so many of these cartoons. Yes, you know the so, voice. He's so memorable, and none of us wanted to try to do Jack's voice. <laughs> so they called me. So we invited Joshua. So I'm going in and all in. And here's a tidbit I just heard. This is one of George's songs. George Noel wrote this song, uh, and I just found out that this is Jack Sheldon's favorite Schoolhouse Rock number. Oh, that's great. No pressure. Preserve no pressure. So. No, no pressure. pressure. Now, pressure now I might point out that George has told me this, but I think it's still true. <laughs> and you know, actually, this song, uh, as much as all this stuff is current, this song seems particularly current hmm. for this. today's issues. <laughs> this is called Energy Blues. <laughs> oh, energy. Sometimes I think I'm running out of energy. Seems like we're using awful love for heating and lighting and driving. Energy, you think we'd be saving it up? Energy, you can get it by damming up a roll. Energy, a windmill can make the breeze deliver. But even with milling and damming, our needs are so much more demanding. Energy, we have to use some kind of fuel. Chop, chop, chop The cavemen use wood to stop their fire Chop, chop, chop They made all the tools that they require Chop, chop, chop Inventions got more and more inspired The fires got higher and higher The clearings got wider and wider Energy We were burning about all the wood up Then one day Discovered that coal would do it better. Miners dug, and it looked like it might just last forever. It seemed like the final solution. It started the American Revolution. Energy, we could just keep on digging it up. Now, way back in 1859, out in western Pennsylvania, a man built a rig that got a lot of laughs from the people who came there. Until one day, from deep beneath the ground, a gusher gushing oil soaked all those who stood around. Now, no one knew when that petroleum blew that the petroleum years were upon us, but that all the cars and trucks would soon cause a crisis. Oh, energy. I try to find some new kinds Energy Exploring to try to make a new find Nuclear and thermal and solar If we miss we'll get colder and colder Energy We gotta stop using you up So don't be cross When mama says turn that extra light out Just turn it off We find us a fuel that never runs out if everyone tries a bit harder, I feel we'll go farther and farther. Energy, we're gonna be stretching you. Out. All right, Joshua. 
Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. I'm going to go recuperate now. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out and celebrating 40 years of Schoolhouse Rock. And especially, we'd like to thank Bob Duro and George Wall for yes. starting this whole thing. On behalf of millions and millions and millions of people who grew up watching Saturday morning cartoons in the 1970s, thank that you. That was me. <laughs> Ladies Can and I gentlemen, do another one? We are super thrilled if you would come out here and do another one with us, Bob. <laughs> We're going to do a song I with Bob. I think it's okay if Bob does another one with us, yes. <laughs> Rock Nostrilus. Thank you, Bob. Oh, yeah. Ready? Just what to do, do He cured the infection With one small injection While Reginald hollered some interjection Hey, that hurts! Ow, that really smarts! Hey, what's the big idea of giving a guy a shot down there? Interjections show excitement by motion They're generally set apart from a sentence By an exclamation mark Or by comma when the feeling's not as strong Darrow Dean played hard to get, uh-huh Around of how he'd woo her, yeah, yeah He bought his affection despite her objection And Geraldine shouted some interjections Well, I never, oh, you got a lot of nerve Hey, you're kind of cute Interjections show excitement or emotion they're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation mark or by come on, the feeling's not as strong. So when you're happy, hooray, or sad, aw, or frightened, eek, or mad, rats, or excited, wow, or glad, woohoo, an interjection starts a sentence right. The game was tied at seven all, uh-huh. When Franklin found he had the ball, he made a connection in the other direction. And the crowd started shouting out, interjections. Hey, you're running the wrong way. Darn, you're going to cost us the game. Hooray, I'm rooting for the other team. Interjections, show excitement or emotion. Set apart from a sentence by an exclamation mark Or by comma when the feeling's not as strong So when you're happy Hooray. Or glad Aww. Or excited Or mad <clears throat> Or frightened <clears throat> Or bad huh? An interjection starts a sentence right Interjection So excitement or emotion They're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation mark I'm when the feeling's not as strong Interjections show excitement or emotion Hallelujah, 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 yeah Darn, Darn that's, that's the end, end. <laughs> Bob Duro, ladies and gentlemen Bob Duro School of House Rock Thank you guys so much for keeping us company tonight. We are Rock Nostris, and as you know, that was the man, Bob Duro. <laughs> Special here, guest vocalist, Joshua. And George Newell, also here introducing Bob, wrote many of these songs.